Rich Little is with us tonight. You all know Rich. He, uh, he's an amazing man. He uh, has a, a great capacity, uh, which I envy, to do impressions, but great impressions. He not only gets the voices, but he gets the mannerisms, which uh, takes a great deal of time. He will be uh, opening at the Holiday House in Pittsburgh, and he's been called the Toscanini of impersonators, and I'd like to get a hold of the man who called him that. It's, it's, it's a lousy billing, because he's very good. Would you welcome Rich Little? <laughs> You don't want to go. <laughs> you don't want to go through life being billed as the Toscanini of Who put that tag I don't on you? Know where that came from? I have no idea. Some critic probably put that label on me. I've seen it though. I've seen yeah. it up there on the marquee. The Toscanini of Impressionists. You know, it's funny. I uh, I was sitting at home the other night. And they had a rerun on Channel 13 of the one of the copycat show. Yeah. That you fellas did, and I was in the other room, and I hear for a moment. You know, when you stop, and I said, who? I said, I know that voice. And I was not watching television. And it was you, and you were doing a takeoff on The Tonight Show, interviewing guests. Yeah. I said, I heard the pencil going, <laughs> yeah, and I heard and that. And you heard the laugh? <laughs> 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 you know the, yeah. You know the whole thing? And I ran in, and there you were. And it's, it's a freaky feeling. It really is to hear somebody doing you. For it was funny doing that over in England. That's where we shot that show, in yeah. England. And uh, the technicians and people over there didn't know half the people we were doing. You know, when we went um, to do you, that didn't mean anything. The slightest idea. Well, I'm and we don't Ed play Sullivan that. was over to do a guest shot, and I remember a technician coming up to me and saying, uh, "Who's the old guy with no neck who can't talk?" <laughs> they didn't know uh, Ed Sullivan. Didn't have a clue. Ed was. Yeah. I said he's a big star. Yeah. What, what does he do? They said. Wonder what Ed's doing now Sunday night. You think he's standing around in New York just introducing cars as they go by? <laughs> There's got to be such a habit, you know. Ed uh, is the only man I've ever met who can count up to three and get two of the numbers wrong. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, which isn't easy. <laughs> the sad thought about it is there are a lot of bears standing in unemployment lines some <laughs> around the country waiting, no, you he, know. He needs uh, people to follow him around writing him day-to-day -day conversation. <laughs> I mean, what was the bit? Oh, yeah, somebody came up to Ed Sullivan on the street because he reads everything and uh, said, Hello, Mr. Sullivan. Ed would probably look over their shoulder and say, Don't walk. <laughs> A cue card, huh? <laughs> He's a lovely man, and Ed Sullivan is one of the people in the business who loves people to do impressions. The first, I hope so. First, oh no, he does. He's got a great sense of humor, and it, because it is a compliment when somebody does you. Obviously, if you're well enough known to do, you have to be flattered. Unless you do a cruel impression, I've never seen you do that. But the first shot I ever did on the Ed Sullivan show was Ed calling because I had done a, a takeoff on his old toast of the town, and that was my first big network shot was on his show. You know, the first show I ever did with him, he gave me a great build-up. Young impersonator from Canada, fine youngster. So welcome out here, Buddy Rich. Oh, really? Yeah, really. <laughs> really. <laughs> You're very lucky. Ed was, must have been hot that night. Usually, uh, you got one of them right. Uh, Years ago, and I've done this on a dais when we've done those friars things for Ed. He, uh, he had, and Ed doesn't mind this, it's, it's just sometimes he forgets. And he had Rosemary Clooney on years ago. And Rosemary Clooney was just about a, as hot as you could get at that time. You know, everything was working and she had all the records. Ed came out and says, now it's for one America's popular, really falling singers. Let's hear it. And he just went up. Come on out here, honey. <laughs> She didn't even get Rosemary or Clooney. She got, come on out here, honey. honey. And it was, oh, I love it. And his son-in-law, Bob Preck, you know, tells these stories. They're hysterical, but Ed doesn't mind. He's, uh, no, he's he a takes all these things. Really if you've been watching now, you've got new fodder because the Watergate show. Yeah. You, you, all of a sudden, you have seven or eight people who are relatively unknown to the general public who now are major stars, Irvin and Talmadge and Weicker and Gurney and uh, all of those people. I've been watching Talmadge and casting it in the movies. I think Charles Lawton would have made a, he's no longer with us, but he would have made a great Irvin. Yeah, you're right. And maybe Gregory Peck to play Senator Baker. <laughs> and um, Ozzy Nelson is going to play Halderman. <laughs> and uh, Ralph Williams is going to play Eric. <laughs> Not bad. Wouldn't that think? be crazy? Yeah, oh, that's great. That would be crazy. Ehrlich reminds me of a guy who sold me some aluminum siding about 1948. <laughs> uh, 
I don't know why. Uh, now, have you have you tried to incorporate any of those voices, oh, yeah. or is it too yeah. new at all to get those down? You're no, very I, I do Baker in uh, in my accent, Senator Baker. Uh, now I want to go over this point just one more time, and I want to get a clear picture of what you're trying to say. Now, according to your testimony, on April the 28th, you and Mr. Halderman, Mr. Ehrlichman, and Mr. Dane went to the president's office. And at that time, the subject of Watergate came up. The president, upon hearing that, sat back in his chair and said, testing, one, two, three. <laughs> testing, one, two, three. You know who uh, I don't know if you've noticed this, uh, and I'm not trying to compete with you on impression. I don't know, but your ear, you know who Gurney sounds like? He sounds like a very sleepy David Brinkley. I, um, I was working it? on Gurney today, and I wrote down a little speech. Uh, interesting sound pattern. Oh, yeah. Uh, now, Mr. Dean, you mean to tell me that when you went to the president's office to discuss the events leading to and the subsequent cover-up of the Watergate incident, that you are not aware that recordings were being made? Well, at the best of my uh, recollection, uh, at that point in time, I would have to say no. Uh, however, I might add that on several occasions during the course of our conversations together, the president would lead me over to a rubber tree plant and... <laughs> have me talk into one of its larger leaves. <laughs> now, now, Gurney says, well, Mr. Dean, would you tell this committee your feelings toward rubber tree plants in general and the president's rubber tree plants in particular? Well, I've uh, never been overly fond of them, Senator. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one that I was That's working fun. on was um, Senator Montoya. Montoya. Isn't he the one from New Mexico? That's right. And, uh... Montoya always reminds me that he didn't hear anybody else <laughs> when it comes to his turn. That's right. He, he's pretty serious. Yeah. Uh, did you... Did you take these tapes to your home? Yeah, yes, yes, I did, Senator. Uh, did you play these tapes on a tape recorder? <laughs> No, Senator, I, I played them on a washing machine. <laughs> At what speed... <laughs> At what speed did you play these recordings? Well, I, I believe it was, uh... might have been faster, Senator. I really can't recall. I think it was something like this. Did anyone else hear these recordings when you listened to them? Uh, to the best of my recollection, Senator, there was just the recording technician and myself uh, listening. The recording technician heard these tapes with you? Why is that? Well, because I don't know how to play them on a washing machine. <laughs> We'll take a quick break. We're coming right back. <laughs> Back. We're talking with Rich Little. Do you remember when you were a kid, the first impression you ever did, and why you were intrigued? Yeah, I think all, I, all I, kids. I think the first voice that I ever did Stewart? was Jim, Jim, Jimmy Stewart. Yeah, that, 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 that was the worst. <laughs> <laughs> I think, and I, I think maybe it could be my best. I don't know. I yeah, really you do a great... Uh, a great admiration for him. And when he did the Julie Andrews show, I spent all week talking to him. And a marvelous man and a great storyteller. And the funny thing is, when you listen to Jimmy Stewart tell a story, you become so conscious of the voice, yeah. it sounds like a guy doing Jimmy Stewart. <laughs> You, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I laugh because you know, of just it's what he's saying. He said, Rich, Rich I, I saw you on some show singing as me. You were, you were singing a song, and I, I just, and it, it, you complimented me. I said, I did? He said, yeah, what, when, when I sing in the shower, now remember, Stuart's not a, not a comic, but he said, when I sing in the shower, it's so bad, the soap gets up and leaves the dish. 
<laughs> the dish. The dish. The, the dish. dish. The, the dish. The dish. Yeah. <laughs> but he was the first. Yeah. What do you do? I would assume that you, you must tape or record them to listen yeah. to the speech pattern because the pattern is almost as important, you know. Exactly. It's probably more important. You must get the voice, the, the, the when tone. When I was working the, on yeah. my impression of you, I played it over and over. I'm not and particularly and easy to do, really. I don't believe to impersonate. Uh, once you get it, it's a, it's a, it's a good. You're a good subject because you have so many things that you do with the tie and the straight back, and the, uh, you know the. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh. all, all, all these, Hi. all these little, little things, <laughs> may, may a weird holy man put easy off in your shorts. <laughs> So you're a... Yeah, I know we all have little things. You know, you, you have to you have to lay this in once in a while, Rich. That's you know. right. Got to put the eye there. I don't know what everybody has those little. Bob Hope is a uh, Bob is extremely Bob difficult to, to do, and he likes to fiddle too, doesn't he? Bob is a he, Bob. I I do the pencil thing, but Bob comes and he has three pencils, and he sits and he hits and, and he's one he's one of these great cuff uh, cufflink straightener constantly, but Bob is voice wise is very difficult to do. Very. I've very never heard high. really anybody right. do Bob Hope very well. No. Any of the great impression, you or, or, or Gorshin or... No, no what I meant, I'm no, including right. any of the great impressionists. I've never heard a good Bob Hope, and I don't know why, because he's got a distinctive sound, but nobody's been able to, just to capture it very yeah. hard. Steve Allen's hard. Outside of the laugh. Outside of the laugh, He's got that giggling laugh. laugh, yes, and Steve and I... <laughs> <laughs> Moving right along, folks. Okay. <laughs> Is there anybody you uh, would like to do? Who, who, who do they request most? Um, I would say that uh, President Nixon mm. is uh, is a good one to do. John Wayne has always been a popular impression. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, I gee, I mustn't. Uh, That's funny. Uh, you get fantastic reaction in the clubs, and uh, of course the kids out there aren't too aware of some of the things I'm doing. Yeah. But. Um, it's, it's dynamite. I, I do you in my act now, um, doing your monologue, and then bringing on Richard Nixon as your first guest. Oh. And, just, do, um, just do a little uh, bit. Nixon comes out. He's been working with Bob Hope for two weeks. And I say, ah, my, my first guest is, um, is uh, Mr. R Richard Milhouse Nixon. Uh, you, you remember him? Ah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> No. Uh, well, we, we, we forget so soon. Uh, no, no. For the past for the past couple of weeks, Mr. Nixon's been working with Bob Hope, and Bob's been uh, helping the president president with his. Uh, see how I goof like you? Just, uh, that, that, that little trip. I, that took two weeks to get that. Uh, no, he's been working with Bob Hope for the past couple of weeks, and uh, here is the brand new president of the United States after only two weeks' work with Mr. Bob Hope. And then I come out, uh, Nixon comes out. <laughs> this is Richard, how I love to be President Nixon. <laughs> I want to tell you, you know, my fellow Americans, I just got back from Hollywood where I was working on a new motion picture. It's called Planet of the Tapes. <laughs> but I want to tell you, oh, Spiro Agnew was going to write the screenplay, but unfortunately he could never find his damn crayons. <laughs> but I want to tell you, no, just go with oh, yeah. I love this guy. But you do a pretty good impression of Tommy Newsom. You do 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 Newsom, boy. Uh, Just, no, two you go Tommy ahead. Newsoms talking to each other. All right. Mm, okay. You got to do 30 seconds of Bogart doing the thing about the strawberries. 
What, has he ever done that? No, never. no, I never have, and I'm not going to do it in There was a time about a year ago, every night he was going to yeah. do that bit, and right. I kept tuning in. Well, the trouble is, I would see you do it on a show, and I said, I'm not even going to get near it, as long as Little is still doing the bit. <sighs> I, I tried to run this ship properly, but they fought me at every turn. They were all against me. I take the broken tow line, defective equipment, no more, no less, but they, uh, they encouraged the crew to scoff at me and to circulate wild stories. I was to blame for Mr. Merrick's poor seamanship and incompetence, but I had the strawberries. I asked for the strawberries. They, they laughed at me, but I proved beyond a shadow of a doubt and with geometric logic and deduction that a duplicate key to the water room icebox did exist, and I'd have produced that key if they hadn't pulled the cane out of action. Uh, Mr. Merrick was the perfect officer, but not Captain Queek, but I have the strawberries. They laughed at me, but I proved beyond a shadow of a doubt and with geometric logic and deduction that the duplicate key to the wardrobe icebox did exist. And I to produce that key. <laughs> Naturally, I could only recall these things from memory. If you ask me specific questions, I'll, I'll tackle them one by one. Oh, that's great. That's, oh. that's why I don't do it. Paul, get out of here. That's, Could you, that's why. John, did you do the same speech as Porky Pig? That's all, folks. All right. We'll return with our guests after we take a pause for this message. <laughs>